and being somebody that has been invest, heavily invested in rental uh, income producing properties, I find that to be really harder to do, especially on the residential side. What's the biggest frustration? And maybe this one, this one will be uh, kind of for the real estate folks out there. Uh, Michael and Tanya, when it comes to, we'll start with Michael for sure, right? On, on this one, but Tanya, maybe you sold real estate too. I don't know. I don't know if I caught that or not. But what's the biggest frustration when it comes to, to 1031 exchange and or capital gains tax deferral for assets that are highly appreciated? What is the biggest? Frustration. Frustration with like the 1031 exchange. Like, is it the timing thing? Is it, I yeah, would definitely I can... say, personally speaking, it's always about the timing. So, so being a real estate investor myself, uh, always looking to try to buy bigger assets and having to sell smaller, uh, an equal amount of smaller assets to get to that. Uh, and being somebody that has been invest heavily invested in rental uh, income producing properties, I find that to be really harder to do, especially on the residential side. Uh, so it's definitely the timing and having to take smaller assets to equalize going after something much bigger than that. Tony, anything to add to that? I, I really don't have anything to add to that because I'm not in the real estate field. I spent all my time in branding and marketing. So I don't really know much about the 1031s. That's fine. Yeah. And so, and we call that the shotgun wedding, Michael and Tanya, right? Where you got to get engaged in 45 days and married in 180. And then right. the other part of that, the 1031 that's really frustrating is the fact that you have to do equal or greater value, right? So if you sell an asset for a million, you got to buy something for a million or better in order to defer the tax. And oftentimes our parents taught us to sell high and buy low. They didn't teach us to sell high and buy higher 180 days later. Right. So the right. very fact that we're selling for a higher price can at times put us in a poor position to buy something at a high price. And that's where um, we have a solution to that for our listeners who are wondering. It's called a deferred sales trust, right? You can learn about learn about it, capital gains tax solutions. But we can save dot uh, com, but you can save a failed 1031 exchange, never worry about a 1031 ever again, never worry about having to sell high and buy higher. Um, you can invest it into in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You can go back into uh, hard money lending. You can go back into um, flicks and flips, ground up development. We just did a deal in Tennessee for a client who sold a $2.6 million business, which by the way, a 1030 doesn't work for, defer all the tax. And then he's building 70 multifamily units in Tennessee, all tax deferred, right? And my mind blew up when I heard about this in 2009 after the crash and saw friends and family and clients lose a lot of wealth, partly because of the 1031 and overpaying. And it's changed everything. And for those who want to learn about that, they go to capitalgainstaxsolution.com.